What's going on everyone? It's Bill Daniel Bill, and this is my Creality Under 5 Plus. I've gone through multiple different hot ends and I just haven't found one that I've enjoyed, and I decided it was time to upgrade to a direct drive unit. In today's video, I'll be showing you how to go from the Creality 5 Plus stock hot end to the Micro Swiss NG direct drive for the 5 Plus. It's very simple, so let's get into it. I want to quickly note that I did move the motor and grub gear assembly. Normally it's at the back with the filament holder, however, it kind of got annoying swapping filament and having to reach through the printer. So I went ahead and I just relocated it to the very front. This is the box that you will receive and it contains all of the components that are needed for installation. I began by loosening the two screws that held on the fan duct around the hot end. My hot end looks a little different than yours if you're running a stock Ender 5 Plus hot end. While my hot end is different, the way it attaches is still exactly the same as the stock unit. I took the PTFE tubing out of the top of the hot end and then used a smaller Allen wrench to remove the screws that held the heater core and thermistor. This is what a stock Ender 5 Plus hot end looks like. You're going to remove the screw that holds the heater core and then the other screw on the side that holds the thermistor. I then removed the two screws that held the hot end to the gantry. Using the Allen wrench, I loosened the two screws on the tensioner so I could take the pulley belt off of the gantry. I removed all three wheels off the gantry using a wrench and an Allen wrench. Using the hardware that was supplied, I got three new wheels and attached two of the wheels to the direct drive unit. The bottom wheel is attached with the eccentric nut so that it can be tightened. I put the direct drive unit onto the frame and then tightened down the bottom wheel. After the direct drive was firmly in place on the frame, I attached the belts back onto it. Using a screwdriver, I put tension onto the tensioner and then used allens to tighten the bolts to hold it. The hot end is placed into the direct drive unit and then a simple set screw is tightened to hold it in place. I carefully placed the thermistor into the heater block and then used the screw to lightly put pressure on it and hold it. You don't want to over tighten this. The heater core is then put into the heater block and the two set screws are used to tighten it down. Make sure you're not over tightening these screws. The 3D printed fan shrouding can then be replaced around the direct drive. Two screws are used to hold it in place. The two fans can be removed from the stock fan assembly. There are four screws that hold both fans in place. These screws will not be reused, so they can be discarded or saved for later use. The main fan is placed into the direct drive unit, and then four screws are used to hold it in place. The other fan is then placed into position, and four smaller screws are used to hold it in place. The BL touch sensor can be removed from its original holder with two screws. MicroSwiss has supplied a 3D printed housing for the BL touch sensor. It is attached with two screws. I reused the screws from the BL touch sensor to attach it to the upgraded holder. The all metal filament guide extruder is no longer needed and was removed with four screws. I then removed the extruder cable from the motor. I also removed the holder bracket by loosening the two screws. Micro Swiss supplied an updated 3D printed filament guide and I used the two screws to attach this to the frame. The extended extruder cable is then attached to the stepper motor. The stepper motor extension cable was then plugged into the stepper motor and all of the cables were carefully zip tied together. I then connected the end of the extension cable to the original E cable. On the Ender 5 Plus, the end stop needs to be removed. The end stop switch needs to be attached to the provided bracket. This prevents the NG fan shroud from touching the gantry wheel or causing any other interference. I moved the NG extruder almost to the point of where it was touching the wheels. I then pushed the end stop until it made contact with the limit switch. I then tightened the end stops bolt to the frame. This isn't that necessary, but I did pick up some cable loom to make sure that all of the wires were together and there would be no interference or dangling of wires. The PTFE tubing was then placed into the extruder and then to the filament guide. The wires run to the back of the machine and the PTFE tubing runs to the front. I used two zip ties to attach the PTFE filament tube to the wires. In order to update the E-steps, there is a downloadable G-code that is provided by MicroSwiss. Download this onto an SD card and then place it into the printer. Open the file and click print and it will instantly finish. Once this is done, the printer's e-steps have now updated. Please make sure that in Cura, your retraction distance is set to one millimeter. The retraction distance should be no higher than 1.5 millimeters. I then ran filament through the PTFE tubing and I held the lever so that the filament could pass through the direct drive and into the hot end. Both of my Ender 5 Pluses currently have an NG and I've had zero issues with them so far. It makes my printing much easier, faster, and more efficient. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment box below. 
Otherwise, throw me a like and a subscribe. It really helps me out, and I can continue to make videos like this for you guys. I'll see you guys next week.